Page two of Look with the Torah. We're holding an Ois Dalid, the fourth paragraph. One seventy six in the canal. Being that the Torah is eternal, therefore all of these ideas are relevant and applicable now, right now. All these, all these bechinas elu, Yashis Chayshech Sisroi, Kesser Elyon, Makiv, Nimi, yeah. Regarding the learning of Torah, it says, I will place my words in your mouth, and the shade of my hand, with the shade of my hand, I will cover you. What is shade? Shade represents this idea of a transcendent energy, peripheral and above and enveloping you. Like we know by sukkis, it says, It says the shade of faith. Interesting, by, by Pesach we say, that, that matzah is the bread of faith, right? Is in Aramaic for emuna, right? You know the word mimuna, right? This is tzila de mehemenusa, the shade of faith. Shu'am shachas makifim al yoinim, that it draws down high transcendent energy that is beyond the vessel, and therefore it has to hover, it has to envelop the person. Vesuka shechamasa meru b'mitzilasa psula. Ah, now we understand why I'll pick, I'll pick this I'll pick Kabbalah. That are api nigle that is sukkah in which in whose sun overweights overshadows the shadow it's puzzle why because you need sila de manusa you need the tzel you need the makif what sun sun is adraba it's like in in of primi it's too much so you need the tzel you need the tzel that overrides the sun because when you have when you have Sail over sun, that's the drawing down of Hashem placing darkness as his cloak. That it is able to act as a periphery, as an encompassing energy. Not sunlight, sunshine, and, 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 uh, and revelation. So any sukkah in which the chama is miruba mitzilasa, the sun overweighs the 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 shade it, it, it is not accomplishing the purpose of why you're making the sukkah which is the 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 shade of faith because anytime that there's R and Gilui implies that the that the keli can actually understand it can 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 grasp it but the whole point of the sukkah is that we don't want to grasp we want a, 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 a energy that is higher than our vessel and that's manifest by the by the tail we know we want that. And that's why, what does the sukkah represent? The physical building of the sukkah, the physical construction of the sukkah represents the in the, in the, in the, in the desert, the, the, the clouds of glory. Like it says, it says, and upon it did the cloud dwell. However, however, but at the very least, you should be able to see the stars from it. What's shot the stars? That a glimmer, a radiance of that enveloping, encompassing energy should somehow shine a little bit. So that's the idea that it shouldn't be to the point that you can't see the stars, meaning it shouldn't be that it's so makif that I don't even know what it, what's above me. Right? That's why what? That a sukkah needs to be higher than Esrim Abba is also a puzzle. Because at the end of the day, you, you can build it very high, but if it's higher than your parameters, uh, heightened parameters, then it's also a puzzle. Because you want that the makif should somehow radiate in the level of primi. Okay, in Aleph Ze'era. And this is similar to the Aleph Ze'era. What do we say Aleph was? Aleph itself is Pele, right? Pele is the wonder, the miraculousness, that energy that is totally beyond you. Aleph Echa higher than your own grasp and wisdom. However, it's Ze'era that we have to, it's like the stars, right? The stars are that reflection of the ability to say that I'm able to, 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 to house a little bit of that Makif energy. So, so too, yes, it's an Aleph, but it's a small Aleph representing the idea that the anan uh, the 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 general makif energy was able to precipitate a little bit into the consciousness of my shabbing 
When do we have this experience? In the learning of Torah, it says, I'll place my words in your mouth and my hands will act as shade and a cover to you. Because at the end of the day, when you learn, do you really know what you're learning? Yeah, you know what you're learning, but it's an Aleph Zaira. In truth, it's, it's you think you know what you're learning, but it really it's an Aleph, it's Pele. Look at that. My mirror said, it says from the utterance, from the breath of the words that you utter when you learn Torah. That's why it's very important to articulate your words from the breath that you create, from the breath that is formed. You create a makif for the neshama. You create, a, so to speak, a mystical cloth, clothing for the neshama through the breath of your words of Torah. I in Sham, look at that Mimer, Diva Masvi Asik, Lisha, so in S. Hashem, Hamarta, I am Kuli. Look at that Mimer. I am Mizab, Diva Masvi, Abber, Diva Midver, Sinabe, Omeid, look at that Mimer. Ah, Hayde Asagos, Vina Toyda. However, through the delving and, and, and grasping of Toyda, Shemasi, Gamkin, Vikilat Allah, Bemaikh, Tunase, that you grasp and you absorb and you collect the Halacha in your mind and in your understanding. Al Zen Nemer, Megala Amukis, Mini Choyshech. It says that the revealer of the deep, Mini Choyshech, is like. Is like darkness. The Ainu, what does that mean? That you're gleaning, you're extracting from the from the transcendental experience of, of Hashem placing darkness as his cloak. That in truth, what's the depth? What's the profundity of Torah? Really, what? We're, it's black fire, higher than white fire. We don't know what it's, what's happening here. In order that it should become some type of relevancy, some type of, 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 of tangibility, and with that we say, the Torah or really Torah is not or really Torah is choishech. but the way that the Torah is manufactured in a way that like the Aleph becomes the Aleph Ze'iri that you compact and you vitamin size the, 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 the transcendent energy to become one with you then Torah becomes or then Torah becomes light and, and then by the Jew learning he makes that the infinite light of Hashem should dwell in the physical world as much as it does in the spiritual world like it's written, I am the beginning and I am the end, right? What do we say? That's the end of Malchus. That's the end of Chachma, right? Reish is Chachma, Reish. And what do we say? Ani was, Ani is the same letters as Ayin. And that's why the Pasuk enumerates, and Hashem spoke to him from the oil moyed, right? And Hashem spoke to, spoke to him from the tent of meeting. On the one hand, it says from the oil moyed, in which in which it's the exact place that what? That Moshe couldn't enter in the previous Pasuk, the end of Parsha Pekudeh. Why? Because the Anan, the cloud was hovering there, the glory of Hashem was filling, was pervading the whole entire space. All of this, this idea of Hashem pervading the space, that's the same idea that when a person occupies himself with Torah, you become an oil mayad. You become a physical space, a physical structure to house the light, the energy, the radiance of Hashem, and the, even the makif radiance of Hashem. Your body, your mind, your soul becomes that space. Our sages teach us, from the time in which the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, Hashem in this world only has the four cubits of halacha. If that's the case, that implies, remember, from the time that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, Hashem only has the Dal Amal which means what? Which means what? Prior to the Beis HaMikdash not being destroyed, that's where He dwelled. So you in your utterance, you in your declaring of halacha, you in your form, form, formulating the halacha in your mind and your heart, become a mini Beis HaMikdash. In which the Abishter is dwelling there. And what part of the Abishter is dwelling there? The Kava, uh, the, the, the Anan, the Makif. As it says, Ki ain there's no such thing as honor except the honor of Torah. What do we just say? Hashem, right? Where was the true glory of Hashem? In the cloud. And the, where was the cloud pervading the Oil Mayed? So therefore, when a Yid learns Torah, he is now experiencing. The, that 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 supernatural pele wondrous energy because because Torah was 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 emerged from the sphere of Chachma and this is called the supernal glory the supreme glory of Hashem covered this gematria. 32. So when we say Kavad Hashem, what are we implying to Kavad Hashem? It says in Sefer Yitzira, there are 50 gates of Bina and 32 pathways of Chachma. 32 paths of Chachma. 
So what do we just say? Oiraisa mi chachma nafkis. Oiraisa emerges from chachma. So when you're saying that the Kaved Hashem is dwelling there, what are you implying? It's not, what's the glory of God? The glory of God is His Chachma. Lamed Beis, the Sivas Chachma. Kaved is Gematri Lamed Beis, the 32 paths of wisdom. Kaved is Lamed Beis, the Sivas Chachma. Ach, be Chachma, zoom a little bit better in some part. Mamish, Megala, Amukes, Mini Choyshech. So as much as this Chachma is in clothing, the infinite life of Hashem, this is the revelation of the deepest in which to us, to our perception, it's truly dark. He's extracting from the level of Hashem places darkness as his cloak. And that's why it has to say it, the glory of Hashem is permeating the whole entire space. Perhaps we could say that this revelation of learning Torah, which is akin to the revelation of Hashem's manifestation in the Beis HaMikdash itself, is even greater than what we think we are receiving from the stars that we're able to see from the Sukkah, which we said is just a glimmer, a mere radiance. The stars being able to be seen from the Makif of the Sukkah is merely and only a spark, a glimmer. Extending from the makif, aval b'toyra, but in toyra she begins with toyra or mamish. That toyra is on the one hand makif, on the other hand pnimi. It's toyra or literally hainu shemem tzayis a makif meir ha'arag gedel v'atzum and begins pnimis. That from the from the inter uh, from the I guess the middle part of the makif. I don't know what that means. That is that is that that is able to shine so intensely. There is some type of of previous relationship. I, uh, it's simultaneous. Yeah, meaning to say, unlike the koychavim, which are only mak, it's a it's a revelation of the makiv. This is actually an internalization of the makiv. I the difference between perspective and internalization. No, maybe. Perspective, I perceive, I perceive the Kechavim, but I internalize the Torah. That regarding the Kriyas Yamsov, it says that there was the cloud and there's a pillar of, of, of smoke or darkness, and it shined upon them. So the darkness itself is shining, meaning to say that which is truly makif and transcendental and beyond my grasp is somehow simultaneously within my grasp. Okay, a similar experience of this. We find by Shmini Atzeres. What Shmini Atzeres? Shehu Simchas Torah. What happens? What happens? Oh, beautiful. Shamakiv in the Sukkis, that the encompassing energy of Sukkis, that the that the that the tzilad the meimunusa the. Shade of faith, which emuna. What is emuna? Emuna is also makif. It's not primi. So the whole experience of Sukkis is what is a very makif experience. Nevertheless, on Shmini Atzeres and Simchas Torah, Atzeres from the word Atzer, which means the. To, to, to absorb and Simchas Torah that what? Do I learn the Torah and Simchas Torah? No, but I dance with it, so I'm holding on to it. Nimshach Ebbechines Primi is. Becomes drawn down on the level of internalization. And you're fully integrating the unintegratable. Kmei Shekot Makmach HaPasuk V'Tseiloi Chemdas V'Yashavti Opiriyoi Mitmatik L'Cheichi Lokin HaMaimer Shezau Inin Sukkis Shpini Atzeres That's the relationship between Sukkis, the idea of Makif, a hovering energy, and then Shpini Atzeres and Simchas Torah is that I'm taking the, a glimmer of that Makif and making it internalized. Interestingly enough, that we dafka don't uh, shake little bit esrog on shmini atzeres. We don't do anything. There is no mitzvah associated with shmini atzeres. Only the dancing itself, yeah. That when a person learns Torah, he is occupying himself with the shade of Hashem, that's Hashem himself. And his and his and his fruits are sweet to my palate. Uh, what are the fruits that are sweet to my palate? That's the words of Torah. They're sweeter than uh, they're sweet like honey, or sweeter than honey. Wow! How do fruits grow? Specifically from the shade, the encompassing energy causes the pre, causes the primius to, to to be filled up, to 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 I guess to develop the pulp, and then that becomes primi within the person. So the actual growth. And development of a fruit is actually contingent on the ideas of makifim, the shade, the sunlight, etc. 
Hine is huh? The Akavis, yeah, but the Akavis, but with a Torah, which a Torah is the idea of primi. You have Makif and primi. Yeah. Yeah, it says that there's an extension of Meishar Benu's soul in every generation. What? So how do we apply the extension of Meishar Benu? Not only in every generation, but in every person, we all have Meishar, a mini Meishar Benu in us. What is the min, what is the dimension of the mini Meishar Benu in us when we learn to? That is the suspension of ego, the full focus and alignment of self, that there's nothing distracting me when I'm learning, there's nothing distracting me when I'm, when I'm serving Hashem. That's reflective of Moshe Rabbeinu energy. Yeah, what are we? Look at that mimer. That the primary occupation of learning Torah, our mindset, our mentality when we learn Torah, is in a manner of bittel, full alignment and focus without any distraction or any ego. Meish Rabbeinu represents the faculty of Das. Integration, internalization. That he's the one that draws down the infinite light of Hashem down here in our life and it makes it tangible. It's not only emuna, it's not only tzel, rather Meish Rabbeinu is the, is the intermediary that makes the Anan Hakave that, couldn't, that he couldn't fit into the Oyel Mayed and he's the one that's what Oyel Mayed, Mayed means to meet, right? The tent of meeting. But it also has the word aid, witness, that he integrates the experience in an internalized way, like witnesses who see what happened. So he's the aidus. Everything is ayumayid. Yeah. Das. By the way, Das also has the word aid. That every single person, when he learns Torah, he becomes an ayumayid. He becomes a tent of meeting. His body, his soul becomes a tent of meeting for him and Hashem. And I will meet you there. Or it also means that oisius. Right? I'll meet you there. Oyel Mayed, the tent of meeting. Venoidaiti is the same letters, and I will know you there. Where is the platform to really know Hashem? Is the learning of Torah. Da'inu leidas Hashem to know Hashem, to come to know Hashem. Shivachai Achai. What are you knowing about God? That He is the life of all life. Ain't it Mavad? And there's nothing else beside Him. Al Dada. Why should God say Uata Ki Ani Ani Hu? Similar to what we just said. That look now, for I am He. What's Ani Ani Hu? Ani the level of of Ayin, which is the idea of even higher than Chachma, Chachma Ma'ayin Timatse, and who, what's the meaning of who is Malchus, the lowest level, they're all the same. Even though, yes, this piece of scripture is regarding the future times, nevertheless, there is the power and potential within every single soul as we glean, as we suckle from the soul of Meish Rabbeinu, to have this power to connect and attach our minds to Hashem, with extreme intensity and connection, like we see this cup, this table, something physically that we are able to palpably, palpably and tangibly hold on to it in our brain. So too, when we learn Torah, that's so to speak, we're grasping Hashem, like it says, chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Tanya. That's the meaning of come into the oil, come into the tent of meeting. You have to come. You have to come, you have to enter and make the effort to enter. Like it says, he who comes here wearing Gan Eden and is learning it is in his, is in his hands. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, Torah is enclosed in physical items. And I traversed to the tribe of Ephraim or the area of Ephraim. What does it mean? I, I traversed, right? From the word regel and I, and I went down. I use my feet. Regal is the lowest part of your body. That's what you're doing. You're using the lowest part of your your body to journey and to enter into a different realm. Because regal, heim kol yinyan gashmim shuvat Torah. That's the regal of Torah. It's the physicalized, concretized things of Torah that are boring and monotonous and seems like they're irrelevant. And sure, nagah chasapar and all that's good stuff. Shebal peh. That's the majority of Torah. Shebal peh. That's the majority of Torah. I took you on my wings. 
what are the wings? Because Ava Vira, that you have to induce, you have to imbue, you have to impregnate in the legs, in the lowest part of Torah, the idea of the wings of Torah, make them fly with Ava and Yira, love and reverence with Zoba, because Boy Lakan, that's when you have enter here, come into here. Shall we stop Chusan Nefesh Lemkari Vashersha? When you come here, you're pouring out your soul before your maker, before your, your source. Hold on. The Pasuk before Vayikra, it says, and Moshe was not able to enter the Eil Before the Milo, we explained above. Why was he not able to enter the Eil Because the, because the, um, Cloud was a reflection of the Hashem placing garment, uh, 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 darkness as his concealment. And even in that level, Moshe Rabbeinu was not able to compute, he was not able to integrate an unintegratable light. So it says he's not able, he's not able to enter. Being that there is an extension of Moshe in every single person's soul, the Hainuah Das, which part of your soul? The Das should be the kiss of your godly soul. The simple reason why there's an inability to reveal and become more sensitive within ourselves is because of the concealment that the animal soul creates on our godly soul. In order to get to this level of the revelation of Moshe, every single one of us, the no distraction, the full focus, the full alignment, to fulfill the idea of coming here with your Talmud in your hand, we have to evoke, we have to conjure a revelation or an inspiration of, of energy from above. How do we do that? In or, basically, in order to learn Torah properly, in order to have Das, in order to enter into the Oyo Moed, you need to do mitzvahs. I know idea mitzvahs. You, you have to match makif with makif. In or, if you want to just enter the Oyo Moed, you can't just enter. But how do you enter into a place of not entering? By also not entering, so to speak. By also connecting to the level of darkness, which is higher than light. That's called the mitzvah, which is higher than Torah. Torah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day is Torah or it's a light that is integratable in my mind. And if I don't learn it properly, then I'm not really learning. But mitzvahs, a five-year-old kid giving tzaka and a hundred-year-old person giving tzaka, right, is the same person. It's all makif. It's all yashas chayshich sisrei. Idea mitzvah shal is in day zeh. Nemar koicha mazraisav. That's the meaning. I took you on my wings. Kit tzaka treimam goy. It says tzaka lifts up the nation. How do you get lifted up? How do you get lifted up to a place, catapulted to a place beyond grasp, beyond rationale? You have to connect to the wings. What are the wings? The ava nira that you induce in in in, in mitzvahs. Kmei shekos al pasvei ati yigdal nad koyach adai shaydeki umam mitzvahs. Through the fulfillment of mitzvahs, you draw down an extremely high, powerful light, a transcendent energy to attach the soul to Hashem and to elevate it upwards. And that's why it says, and he called to Moshe, what's I am the caller? The mitzvah is doing the calling. A mitzvah is calling you and saying, fulfill me. Uh, 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 accomplish me, achieve me. Why? Because because through that mitzvah, you're connecting to the makif, which is higher than primi. You're connecting to the lining of Vayikra Moshe. You're connected to the Anan, the, the, to the space that Moshe couldn't even enter. Mitzvah Zamelef, the, the commandments of the king. You should always honor the mitzvahs because the mitzvahs themselves are my shluchim. The mitzvahs themselves are my agents, are my messengers to reveal godliness in this world. So honor them. When you get tefillin, get the best tefillin. When you get matzah, get the most expensive matzah, which even the cheapest matzah is so expensive. And when you get a lulav and esrog, mechab din es mitzvahs. Why? Because they're my shluchim. They're my, they're my emissaries. O shluchim shaladim kemaisai. And the shliach of a person is like him. So the shluchim of Hashem are what the mitzvahs. So therefore the mitzvahs are kemaisai, are like him. So when you're actually connected to a mitzvah, you're actually connected to, connected to the essence of God, even higher than your rational and logic which really supersedes even Torah. And you should remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem and you should uh, uh, perform them. Oh, what's mitzvah? Mitzvah hu mem tzadik ve'atbash yudke. What is a mitzvah? A mitzvah, everybody knows what atbash is? 
Atbash is basically a, another way of interpreting the letters that instead of Aleph, I'm doing Taf. And instead of Beis, I'm doing Shin. It's called Atbash. So therefore, when you see a word and you see an Aleph, it could be interchanged with a Taf. And when you see a Beis in the word, it could be interchanged with a Shin. Gimel, Reish, Dalid, Kuf. Okay? Just those letters? No, the whole, the whole, the whole... No, no, no Aramaic. Oh, it's just, no, I'm saying there's, it's just those letters can be interchangeable with another letter? Yeah, yeah. The, Aleph, Aleph Taf, Beis, she, uh, Beis Shin, Gimel, Reish, Dalet, Kuf, Hey, and so on, and so on and so forth. Okay? That's called Atbash. Atbash, Aleph Taf, Beis Shin, Atbash. It makes sense. Okay? Aleph to Tav. Shin. It's called Atbash. So what is the word mitzvah in Atbash? If you take the mem and the tzaddik of mitzvah in Atbash, what do you get? Yud and Hey. So what is a mitzvah? How do you spell mitzvah? Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. Again. Again. Mitzvah. Mitzvah is mem, tzaddik, Vav, Hey. You already have the Vav and the Hey of Hashem's name, right? So now with Atbash, if you change the mem to a... Uh, a, a, a yud, which is the interchangeable, and a tzaddik to a hey, right? Tzaddik is so adbash is aleph tav, shin, shin beis, gimel, reish, tzaddik kuf, hey. I'm sorry, tzaddik uh, 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 kuf dalid, kuf dalid, tzaddik hey. Tzaddik and hair interchangeable. So when you say the word mitzvah, what are you really saying in a way of atbash? Yud ke vav ke. Got it? So he's saying, now we understand why. Because, they're the mitzvahs of the king. Who's the king? Yudke Vavke. And the mitzvahs are Yishluchim, and you have to honor them. Why is a mitzvah Yishluchim, and you have to honor them? Because Shliach Shal Adam Kemaisei, who's the Adam? Is Yudke Vavke. Who are Yishluchim? Mitzvah. What are his mitzvahs? Yudke Vavke. In Atbash. What are you trying to do? You're trying to excuse what you first said. Oh, yeah. When you're doing a mitzvah, you're involving yourself with the you're doing a mitzvah, you're involving yourself with the shame Hashem in the name of God. We know that the mitzvahs are called the 248 limbs of the king. That they are the vessels for the, to house the infinite light. Now we know why they're the vessels for the infinite light. Because a mitzvah is Yud Kevavke. Or if I'm in Mikro Mitzvah Samelech, sometimes we call the Mitzvah Samelech, the Mitzvah Samelech, he begins to see where the commands of the king, who shall who Malchus Atzilus. That's called Mal. That's called Malchus of Atzilus. That in the Kiyam Mitzvahs, Kmeishen Yim Shavu Lamata, who begins Mitzvah Samelech. Mitzvahs as they are drawn down in the physical world, or as they are drawn from the level of Malchus of Atzilus, they are called Mitzvah Samelech, the commands of the king. Achshur Shalemayla, who begins to say where So hold on, are they the limbs of the king, or are they the commandments of the king? The commandments of the king are much less intimate than the limbs of the king. So on the one hand, they are the, the commandments of the king as they are executed, as they are revealed from Malchus of Atzilus and below. But they're the limbs of the king as they are higher than that. How do you commune? How do you connect? To this idea is by, by having an awakening from below. Uh, yeah, that you're connected to the limbs of the king. Literally, when you're putting when you're when you're putting on a talis, when you're putting on a tefillin, you're literally holding onto the king's hands. It's not just the king's commandments. And that's why at first we call the mitzvah shluchei Hashem. They're literally the emissaries of God. As they are in the realm of malchus. The ladder. Is, is sitting firmly um, the, the, the ladder is standing firmly down here below and its head is reaching the highest levels and the, the angels of Hashem are ascending and descending right like we said before what are the the, the angels of Elikim, the shluchim of Elikim? They're the mitzvahs that are oily v'yordim boy. These are the mitzvahs of the Jewish people that are ascending and descending depending on our love and fear, depending on our connection. Shemis alam l'mayli asulam. That they are, this is beautiful. And how are mitzvahs lifted up? How do we conjure, how do we develop, develop a love and reverence when we do the mitzvah? You have to daven, you have to make a ladder. The ladder is what causes the oily v'yordim boy of the mitzvahs. 
Like it says elsewhere. But even then, they're not shluchim like malachim. And at the end of the day, a malach is a created being. You want to say that mitzvahs are literally God's essence, but a malach is not God's essence. A malach is is, is, a, is a created being, like 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 a human being is is a, is a separate entity. Rather, it's like the idea of I am doing the calling. Me literally, I know I'm shachas akayich benefesh. I did it today. My nefesh li is bivikin is bayi lekan. That when Hashem calls us, how does He call us? Not through a malach, not through a shliach, but rather through His shluchim. What are His true shluchim? Not malachim, but the mitzvahs themselves. That's I'm doing the calling. The tefillin saying, Eli, come, please wrap me up. And when I when I, when the tefillin calls me to say, wrap me up, I'm making a hamshacha, drawing down from kayach hanefesh, the deepest recesses of the soul, to lift up the soul to a place we begin as boy lekan. Would be able to marry. The zelva That's why it says that I am the prayer. I am the prayer that when you connect to the tefillah in a true way, you connect to the ayin of the davening, you connect to the bittel of the davening, you connect to a place that you're totally non-existent anymore. And this is the proper preparation to be able to learn Torah properly. We said you need the 